Welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about how to maintain your Power BI data sets and reports exactly like all the big guys do. That's right. We're talking about one simple way that you can make your Power BI reporting environment much more enterprise worthy or whatever you want to call it, much more secure. And that is thin reports, separating your reports from the data models or the semantic models themselves. So first we're gonna talk about why you might wanna do this and what are the advantages and why do all the big companies do it? And then we're gonna talk about how to do it. Historically, it's been really difficult, but now with the launch of Microsoft Fabric and Semantic Link, it's become a lot easier. And with Semantic Link Labs, you can just execute three simple statements and it'll go ahead and split your reports in two. So. With that, let's go ahead and let's talk about why you might want to have your data sets and your reports in two different workspaces. So the first reason is you can connect multiple reports to a single data set when they're split apart. This reduces storage costs and helps to create a single source of truth. The more reports that you can connect to a singular data model without you know, messing around with the data model and making it a bad data model, the better because they're all coming from the same place. So even though a report might have one view over here and a different report might have another view over here, having a singular data model with a thin report over to the side is a great kind of starter step. The next big advantage is security and governance. When you have a thin report and a disconnected model, you can essentially put them in two different work workspaces. In, in fact, ugh, it's best practice. You can have your data sets workspace over here and your report workspace over here. This allows you to grant your business users broader access to the report space and then keep the data set workspace locked down by just granting the, the business users viewer access to that data sets workspace. Finally, the third big reason that you would want to do this is when you start to have a really large BI team in an enterprise, you start to have kind of more specialized roles. You start to have report modelers or people that are better at data modeling and report builders or people that are better at UX stuff. When you split the files in two, you can essentially have a team working on building the data model or maintaining it or making an update. At the same time, the report builder is designing the report or maybe not making an update, right? If you have multiple reports connected to the same semantic model, this allows you to essentially run data projects in parallel and it speeds up the development process of building out dashboards. So with that, have I sold you? If I haven't, <laughs> just remember that by not splitting this up, you are losing out on these three things. You're losing out on single source of truth reporting by connecting multiple reports to a singular data model. You're losing out on enhanced security by essentially having one data sets workspace and one report workspace and having different permissions for both. And then you're potentially losing out on time. That's the amount of time that you could save by having one person build the data model while the other person builds the report and they operate and execute in parallel. So if I have sold you, Let's go jump into my computer and let's take a look at how to split apart your Power BI reports into a data set and a data set workspace and a report in the report workspace. And we're going to do this using Fabric and Semantic Link Labs. All right, let's go. So here we are in my Microsoft Power BI tenant. And as you can see, I've already started to do this just a little bit. So I'm over here in what I like to call lobster view, but Microsoft calls lineage view. They're just not that fun. Um, and I have, as you can see, kind of my report set up in this workspace that I've called production. And then I have my data set set up in this workspace that I call developer. And as you can see, not all of the reports in this workspace are like this. So I have this schedule dashboard right here and this example 11 revenue target dashboard right here. And that's because I developed these like regular Power BI dashboards. I built the data model in Power BI and built the report in the same front end. Now before Semantic Link, what I would essentially have to do is I would have to 
download a copy of this report, delete all the queries out of Power Query, and then go get data from Power BI and connect to this model after I've already loaded it into developer. And that is just no longer true. With Semantic Link Labs, I can essentially use Python to do all that for me. So first let's review the code, and then we're gonna go take those final two data sets that I just showed you, and we're gonna rip them apart. And we're gonna make sure that our data sets go in with the rest of the data sets in our developer workspace, and our reports stay in the production workspace. So let's go back and let's take a look at the code. Here I am in a Fabric notebook. And this Fabric notebook does a couple of things. So first it tries to install Semantic Link Labs and installs it if it's not already installed. So that's what this step is doing here. Next, it imports Semantic Link Labs and it imports Semantic Link Labs report. Finally, it takes some variables. So it takes the workspace that the combined report data center is in. It takes the name of the report, the name of the data set, and then it takes where we want to move the data set and essentially what we want the new data set's name to be. Finally, there's a two binary variables here. So there's a true if we want to delete the original data set, which in this case we do, so we'll leave that as true. And then there's overwrite if we want to overwrite essentially the data set in the destination if it already exists. Finally, we execute three steps using Semantic Link Labs. First, we move the model essentially, or move the data set only from the original workspace into the new workspace with the new name. Then we rebind the report. So we essentially take the front end of the report and we connect it to the data set in the new workspace. And then if it's true, we essentially delete it out. Now, if you remember, I have two reports that I needed to break out. I have my schedule dashboard right here, and then I have my example 11 revenue target card right here. So let's first run this for the schedule dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this minimize this. I'm going to go update these variables. So I'm going to set my report to schedule dashboard because that was the name of the report. I'm going to set my data set here to schedule dashboard. And I'm going to change this to schedule dashboard semantic model. I'm going to leave original set true and true. I'm going to run this cell. It's going to run pretty quick. And then I'm going to run this cell to actually execute the code and move the semantic model. So if you see it's running, then 26 seconds later, it's gone ahead and it's moved all of them. So let's go back. Here we are. All right, here we are in Lobster View where you can see it was connected. I'm gonna refresh this page. And just like that, you will see that my scheduled dashboard is now split out into two different reports. So all I have left is my example 11 revenue card. So I'm now gonna do this by one really quickly by essentially doing the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna go and change the report name to schedule dashboard. I'm gonna change this to schedule dashboard and I'm gonna change this right here. And sorry, not schedule dashboard, example 11. I'm gonna run this cell right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And in about 30 seconds, this one will be fixed as well. And just like that, it's been moved. So if we go back into our workspace right here and refresh it right here, what you'll see is this production workspace now just contains thin reports and all of our semantic models have been relocated to our data sets workspace. The code that I just showed you will be available on my GitHub, linked it down in the video subscription. And if you learned something today and are interested in business intelligence, please consider subscribing. Please like this video and comment. It really helps the channel. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. My dog's coming to get dinner. I hope you have a good night.